Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. Today we're back down at my friend Dean's place, SoCal Classic Car Storage. You guys, this is Robert. Robert has a company that builds one car a year called Vin Racer. VinRacer.com, check it out. All your cars are themed this way. This is the seventh car that you've completed so far. Correct. And all of them are in this vintage race style. So the reason why I started building these is there was a moment in time when I was, I think, probably 11 years old. My dad took me to Riverside Raceway, and I watched the parade of cars go up the 60 freeway to get off on Day Street. And I was always impressed with, wait, that's a race car on the road? And that right. vintage race car theme of, you know, the 60s and the 70s when, you know, it's two hands to turn it, two feet to stop it, and you better wear two pair of underwear when you're driving those yeah. things, right? Because things happen real quick. Yeah. To try and go back and find those cars, it's impossible to do in their history. But I actually build them to the way they would have been built back, whether it's an SCCA rule book or a European rule book. And there's actually kind of two types of vehicles that I found. There's the traditional Trans Am racer, the road yes. racers of those of those days, like Riverside. Yeah. But I also found that these other cars called saloon racers which were actually NASCAR style, like the Galaxies and the Thunderbolts and the other things. And I thought, what a great way to maybe build some of those things and roll into a car show yeah. and find a client where it's just your head scratching because you didn't know about that history. You could argue that the car could race in NASCAR, probably not with the lights and some of the other treatment on it. But mm -hmm. if you look at the European style versions of these, they had the rally lights because they may have raced even an endurance version of those races. Got it. So let's talk specifically yeah. about this car. What, what year is it? 67 Plymouth GTX. It actually started life as a Belvedere II. And everything about this car could have been done in the late 60s, yeah. early 70s. Well, there are modern engineering elements to it, Okay, but they're hidden. It's got a Holley Sniper EFI uh, 4100 series carburetor on it, but it's fuel injected, computer controlled ignition. The suspension on it is actually coilover. It is. But if you look at it, you won't necessarily see it unless you go looking for it. So there's some things that give you the modern performance, but give you the vintage look. Still stock framework under the car? No, the frame is completely caged. It's a 12-point racing cage. Okay. It's all boxed in. It's all sorts of underpinnings. So the frame is really stiff. And staying with torsion and leaf suspension on this thing would have just caused this car to, to really not be fun to drive. Yeah. So we went with the Viking uh, twin adjustable coilovers. Okay. A uh, new K member, new four link rear end. So it gives it the performance with the rigidity of the frame, but the drivability that you want. All right, so let's start with popping the hood. I always love starting okay. with the engine. The hood's about to go in a different direction than what we would all expect here. So I was asked the question, why on this? My answer is because. Because it's flat out cool for one. I mean, let's be honest, dude. Cars in those eras, if the hood pins failed and that hood flipped up, you're right, you're looking through a little slit below the windshield. This sure. won't do that. Not possible. Wow, this is, okay, I see what you mean. I can't see what's going on suspension-wise here at all. Is that part of what these plates are for, or is it just a look you wanted for the well, car? Well, so underneath the plates are the roll bar tie-ins from the front part of the frame horn back into the cage, and the wiring runs along the bottom side of that. So I wanted to clean up the look. I yeah. wanted to create kind of an old school aircraft bomber style look, right? That's yeah. a 50 style. And give it that question that guys are thinking. As they look at it, they go, well, tell me about that. And that's that's what I want to evoke in these designs. Yeah. People have a conversation with you because they don't understand it. 440 big block. It's all blueprinted, balanced, uh, aluminum heads on it. But on top of it is a Holley Sniper EFI. So it's fuel injected. With which the you look of a carburetor. With the look of a carburetor. There's a little teeny screen you under just, the dash. You just dial it. Dial it in. You guys, there's a lot of conversation that happened off camera, but I want to bring it on camera. You were saying, other than the paintwork, you do about 99% of the car by yourself in your garage driveway? Yeah. So like even these plates, is this you making yeah. these? Yeah, it's basically going to a uh, metal store and at uh, IMS, right? A little plug for IMS, those guys are cool. They know me because I spent a lot of money there. Yeah. Like these are just all DA sanders where you just sand it and you get that old school patina finish. It's brand new metal. And then you get your dimple dyes that kind of create these. But dude, I just think it's cool in the sense that you do something completely different to make a living. So I would think building something like this, you would go in search of what can I buy off the shelf that's gonna look great that I can right. throw in here. I mean, the dimple dye, like that's gonna take a minute, right? right. Same thing like I notice on the underside right. of the hood here. Fiberglass hood, yeah? Well, fiberglass bump in the center, but it's, it. it's all metal skin, but it's a custom frame that, that is on the original Plymouth skin. 
The hood scoops that you see, those are actually custom. Those are not GTX hood scoops. I wanted a lower profile, so I made those. You did make these? Yeah, those actually draw air in, so these are actually pulling air into the into the car. So I'm noticing another air part that I'm questioning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you do have where lights would have been before you've yep. opened them up for intake. Yeah. I always loved the Ford Thunderbolts, and they would draw air in through that second pair of lights. So that's exactly what this does. They used to have the, the old orange ducts, you know, that would run up there, so it's the high temp ducts. It kind of ties even the orange into the GTX emblem, so you got a little bit of, a little touch of orange on there yeah. just to kind of break up the, all the black that's on it. Did you make this little chin spoiler too? Yeah, yeah, I made the chin spoiler, and, and some people have asked me if these parking sensors, no, those are the turn indicators. Oh, nice. They're just little LEDs that sit on the front, <laughs> but that's actually the stock bumper, but it's cut apart into about nine different pieces to make it more of a valence, so it's narrowed, it's pulled up, so it gives you that angle on the outside outside and then it actually is functional where it draws the air up from the chin spoiler but without being too low directly into the radiator. Did you do that yeah. yourself too? You did? Yeah. Wow. All, all the fabrication. Of it. That's impressive man. Even these grills, these are a rock uh, protector for a Harley Davidson. <laughs> so I designed all that just to sort of fit all together and it, and it worked. I mean I absolutely love it especially that it's actually functional. Yeah. So I want to talk about this hood because knowing that it was coming up this way my first thought is well this is going to be rubbing against the front portion here so yeah. explain what you've done here. When I started down the process, I, I didn't want the hood to go back. I was always really enamored with the Jag hoods, you know, with yeah. the tilt forward, but they have a yeah. full clip that tilts up. As the cars went in the 70s, they had the fixed front end, but the hood actually tilted the other way yeah. with the fixed front end. Yeah, it. yeah, totally. And it really cleans up the front of the car. And I just said, I'm gonna figure out a way. I'm a mechanical engineer by my undergrad, even though I'm in the digital side of, of technology today. Pulled out the old, I, <laughs> the old knowledge that I had in the books from 40 years ago and just started engineering the hinges and get, get the clearances right. And, and cut and one of the big fails I had is when I got it back from paint I assembled it and there's never really a day when you get it back from paint and you assemble it it goes back hundred percent right. and I thought that I had it all aligned with all the proper shims and I pulled the hood up and I took the paint off the front so oh, I, no. back, I didn't touch the paint up but that's the live and learn right you design in these tolerances and these things for these types of cars yeah you know, which is what I did so. these hinges did you make these yourself no actually that's a bought part so okay. the, the boys at Speedway they, okay they'd make some great stuff and a lot of the vintage pieces so these are some of their vintage trunk hoods, but they're all adjustable. So you can pull the hood up back yeah. and forth. Do you know the power on this? Did you dyno Six, it? Yeah, 625 with the dyno, 575 torque. It'll get moving real quick. Yeah, and then what do you mate to, like transmission? It's got an SST TKO five speed in it. It's got a hydraulic clutch. It's got a center force uh, clutch assembly. So it's got the modern running gear, five speed. The car is geared to do about 185. <laughs> Whether you choose to do that, uh, that's, like I said, how many pair of underwear are you wearing when you yeah. choose to do that. So, yeah. yeah. God, that's cooking, yeah. dude. And you did say it's a Mosier rear end, right? Yeah, it's a Mosier 9-inch limited slip on there. I don't remember what the gear rate, 383, 387, something like that. Okay. If you want to take it around a track, it's got plenty of pull out of a corner. So speed. you can also get up to top yeah, speed sure. and not be running yeah. out of RPMs. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah I get it. Let's talk these wheels here, because yep. these are, uh, there's a few things that stand out right away to yeah. me. Pretty tall sidewalls, right? Yeah, that's a 17 inch rim. It They're, is, okay. It's actually made by Vintage Wheels, the guys down in San Diego, they do all the Cobra uh, mm -hmm. sizes. So these are actually co wheels for a Cobra. They're meant to go obviously with a lower profile tire, but one of the things that i kind of a fan of is symmetry. So if you look mm -hmm. at the car, the car, it's a big car. These are actually a police pursuit tire, so they're speed rated up to that 185, so. <laughs> are these bias plies or are they radials? No, they're radials. They are, okay. Yeah, and what are the sizes on the tires? Uh, 265, 6017s. So they're about. Is it the same all the way around? Yeah, it's the same size, but changing the stagger of the rim, but on the same tire will create a taller crown for turning on the front, but a flatter surface for the rear for traction. But it gives you the universal tire size that if you ever need to replace all four tires, right, you're not going after strange sizes that are discontinued. And you said these are real knockoffs. Yeah, those are real knockoffs. That's yeah, you so can see cool. the safety wire on no, it. No, I see the safety wire. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's real. You could it's, fake someone out no, with it's, that, right? So if you look in there, there that's actually a wheel adapter that uh, Vintage Wheelworks makes. And they're on a Wheelwood hub. So it's a six piston caliper in there. It gives you the real knockoff performance, yeah. the old Halliburtons, but it's in this kidney bean style that they do, which is cool. Really neat, man. Yeah. Is it a manual brake setup or did you power it? It's powered. It's yep. a Willwood, Willwood Center. There's a brake bias adjuster on there. Well, you made these plates really easily removable. Yeah, huh? so it's all Zeus, Zeus fasteners, aircraft mm -hmm. fasteners. Pop this, pop off. 
So I'm a big fan of side exit exhaust. I say it every time. Yeah. It. What did you do exhaust going back here? And did you make it all yourself or did, even your headers? The headers I actually bought from TTI. Okay. But from the collector all the way back, there's an X-pipe in the center and it crosses over. And then this rear seat's removed. So it's a, just a package tray back there. And there's two resonators. They're about 12 inches long. I think the body diameter is three and a quarter and the internal is three and a half. Uh, it rumbles. It rumbles. The plate here around the side exit, you make that also? Yeah. Absolutely love that. There hasn't been any metal work done like around roof. Oh yeah. There oh there has oh, been. Oh yeah. Uh, shaved drip rails. So oh this, yeah, yeah. No so shit. So the drip yep, rail is all left shaved. The shadowing of yeah, it. And, and basically that's a that's a weld rod that's put in there. The wind wing was cut in half. I didn't want the old school wind wing, I wanted the race look. And if you decide, if you want to let your hair fly, right? Yeah. You can take the window here, squirt a little dishwashing fluid, and you can pull the window out and you get a full, full open car. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, so then it's just held in there by the by the rubber. Now I'm noticing, I just noticed this, these holes here, is that, do you have a pop-in window? It's designed to do that, but for this car, because there's no windshield wipers mm -hmm. on it, there's no defroster in it. It ain't going out in the water. And then no door handle on no the door other. Wow, that door's really light, isn't it? Yeah. Is it all just basically skins and that's it? It's a skin, but it's, wow, got, it really it's all, got all dynamat in there, so it doesn't rattle, doesn't feel hollow, but it feels mm -hmm. solid. Now you were saying also that you've widened the both the front and the rear on this car. I like hips on things, so if you look down the front of the car, you'll notice that the front fender is bowed out and the rear fender is bowed out, so it gives you the space to get bigger tires in. But that's, I mean, that's a considerable amount of work bringing those well, out, right? And, and keeping the symmetry and the fitment. Not really, you just take a, uh, a cutoff wheel and cut the entire fender all the way right down the middle here. Take a wooden buck and pull it out and then stitch it back together. Really? Yep, same thing on the Same uh, the thing recorder. on the back here too, yeah. really? Wow. That was a lot of welding right there. Yeah, that's a big chunk of metal right there. And the, the rear openings are, are redone, so it, it gives you the extra width. Then if you look down at the back here in the little rain area, it's got a little uh, little air vent that will blow air into the trunk oh, wow. and just kind of clear out any gas fumes or anything like that in there. <laughs> is it two tanks or is it just dual fillers? Single tank, dual filler. Those are three inch Cobra fillers. I, I wanted the old Charger style, but this was kind of the cool thing of learning about some of the European racers is because they would do those rallies and you never know where the pits were set up because it could be on the side of the cliff or the over here. That's the idea for the dual filler. So you're, you're always yeah. on the right side. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool, man. Yeah. And I love these old Shelby. Yeah. I mean, those are just... You know, you had to do all the metal work to get it recessed. And of course, oh, I've had, yeah, I've had the naysayers sure and stuff going, oh, that's not aerodynamic. Well, at 185 miles an hour with open window car, that's not gonna scrub off that much. No, there's a lot of stuff up here I'd be more concerned about, even at 120, than I would about exactly. the damn fuel fillers, exactly. you know? Exactly. Is this you also, this rear spoiler? Yeah. I might have burned my fingers a few times with the big and stuff. And, and then I made the rear valence on that, so it gives it the bumper look, so you kind of fool uh, police officers. It really does look like there's a bumper there. Right. Little LED blinkers there, right? So it keeps it legal. Mm -hmm. and a little aircraft switch inside, so you flip it to one side, it turns it on. Yeah. I know you're not going to take this in the wrong way, but as I've walked around, there's multiple spots where you see some paint blemishes, mm -hmm. you know, little bubbles here. And, and yeah, this is a it. driver, so if you want to go and do a paint repair, it's it, this is a Mercedes black. You can have it repainted at Mako. It's meant to be enjoyed rather than put on mm -hmm. a pedestal and mm -hmm. go do something with it. Yeah. All right, interior stuff, total race car. Well, everything's yeah, super everything's simple. simple, seats gone. Aircraft switches are, the, are the, the prerequisite. The dash is all stripped. It's stripped of every single switch with the exception that the key that you see in there, that's actually just the battery cutoff. So that's just on off power. That's simply on off. So that just a little, little hot wire goes to a solenoid in the back that, that uh, turns the battery on. The top switches are kind of the, the accessory switches. So you got your ignition one, radiator fans, headlights, auxiliary lights, and then your primary is your primary ignition and then a push button start. But I built that console. The console is three pieces. Actually, it's five pieces. I take that back. On either side, you've got the Zeus fasteners, the aircraft fasteners. Again, so you can get in there for serviceability. And all the wiring everything. of the car is right down the middle of the, of the center. So nothing is up in the dash. They're just minimal wires for the gauges, but everything is controlled down in the center. So in the whole rear you built as well? Yeah, and that's all texture coated with the lizard skin there. So it's got acoustic and thermal properties protection in there. Mm -hmm. It's all brushed aluminum, all you know the old school rivets. Did you build your own cage too? Yeah. 
Really? The seats are out of Corbo UK. They're the old Porsche 917 style. I just like that Le Mans look with uh, the rivets. Good buddy of mine uh, over at uh, Expert Auto Upholstery out in, in uh, Menifee, um, he just does amazing work. He mimicked the same design and look of the rear sail panel. It's got the ABS all the way around, which is what Shelby would love, love the Mustangs to have in it, right? So it gives it that race car theme. Bitchin' interior, man. I just, I, I love this. And it looks like the way your shifter comes up and bends over, like it's ergonomically, this car looks like it's set to drive. Yeah, that's the SST guys, and that's the proper placement of the original four-speed transmission and that sort of layout of the shifter. I love the simplicity of this dash. It's all analog. That's actually a 427 Cobra rear view mirror that's on the dash. Is it there. really? Yeah. Do you want to see the rear? Oh yeah, yeah. The fuel cell in here, um, because this is a thirsty motor. Fuel, I've never seen a fuel cell anywhere near this size. Yeah, if you look underneath, thing. it's actually a T. So it's down. narrow in terms of sitting between the horns. It's fully caged, but because it's got the twin fillers, what I wanted to do is get that extra capacity because there was no spare going to go in. Built by the guys at RCI. This um, is a full-on custom cell for this car. Yeah. And then to be safe, right, as much as you like the vintage stuff and the way it looked, put the battery in the box, keep it safe when you're driving it. I didn't know about the whole mechanical engineer background. So that adds a lot to not the physical look, but all the thought that's got into how you've built this vehicle. You know, when you're in college, you, you claim to study, right? But you've got the social side of, especially when you go to a little school like San Diego State where everybody just goes for the education. <laughs> And so it's more of a designer uh, fabricator rather than a true engineer um, in terms of my role in this stuff. So yeah, mm -hmm. there's some stuff. You do some calculations and some angles and stuff like that, but primarily it's just kind of putting the eye on it and going and cutting a piece of metal. And if it doesn't fit, you cut another one. Cut another one. <laughs> Guys, just so you know here, um, something Robert told me was, you know, the car is, it's in its break-in stages right now. Fresh engine, fresh trend, fresh everything. Yeah. So we're gonna go real mild. We're probably not even gonna go over 3,500 RPMs, I would guess. Boy, this car sounds so healthy. It's a bit throaty. And one thing at the, uh, the front steering is there's so much tow in right now, I mean, a camber in, that the steering is really touchy. So I want to work through that with it with the owner because it, it just it moves around so much. Does it? Yeah. I can tell you this much. I mean, just from the passenger seat, I've driven old Mopars before that are like all original numbers matching old. This doesn't feel like that on the road, not even from the passenger seat. You feel super planted. Yeah. It's a tight build. It's almost like a watch. You gotta just all the little knickknacks to get it all right. Yeah. One thing I don't like about these uh, competition steering wheels is you get a little bit of jitter in the wheel. Ah, uh, gotcha. So, because there's a pin here, but I think that would probably correct itself if you clamped it down and they actually have a bolt that California says you can't have the pin in. You gotta have it bolted so you can't take the wheel off while you're at speed. Because some guys will do that stupid shit. Really? Oh yeah. That's not really a time I'd want to remove the no, wheels no. while you're driving. Dale, uh, Dale Earnhardt actually did it on a, a dare to his buddies while he was on the racetrack. Pulled the wheel off, put the wheel back on. Oh, when we got back in the car, go back out there. Holy crap, oh my goodness. I have never seen anything like, oh my gosh. No way, man. That's no. Tissue in my head. 
But I'm with you. There's not, and, and it's not even just V8. I'm going to go this much further and say, because there's European V8s and they do sound extraordinary. Yeah. They don't sound like an American V8. It's certainly not like a big block V8 in my opinion. Yeah. There's something about all the air that gets moved with this big of a motor and you know yeah. three three and a half inch exhaust. It's it's. Matt told me he goes, I want a lopy. 440 big block. Yeah. When I pass somebody, I want them to either do this or do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, I get yeah. it. This is going to do exactly that. Yeah, exactly. It's so funny, dude. I'm around all these cars nowadays, the Resto mods that have almost like an AMG style interior. Beautiful. I'm not knocking it. But when I get in the simplistic vehicle like this, I love it. I love the simplistic, pure nice. analog experience. You know, go by. Yeah. It's some really nice D cell pops happening. Yeah, I think the timing's still a little. It's still in learning mode. See, it's learning down there. That's oh, how yeah, new it is. Yeah. That's how new it is. So it's still learning air fuel ratios and all and heat and all that stuff. So that's why I gotta do all this little. Is the learning based on how the vehicle's driven? Yeah, driven and ambient temperatures, uh, uh, octane in the fuel, all that, all that stuff. That's really cool. Less than 50 miles or whatever on the car. I'm like, God, bummer. I kind of want to feel the power of the 440 and stuff. Oh, it's still, it's still got it. You know, there. still feeling it. And I know some of you guys will agree with me on this. If you're a true enthusiast for this type of a car, just rolling down the road in it, it I, I, like it makes me smile. It, it, you know, it literally puts a smile on my face. Is that what a car should do? It's got little rattles in it. It's got you know loud noises and stuff, but. That's what this car should do. Yeah. I mean, Matt, the new owner, should just absolutely be in heaven with this car, I think. And these seats are tight, but they're actually not, uh, they're not awful. They're, they're, it's a fairly comfortable seat. It took six months to build them. Wow. That's really bitching how it does that. Yeah. So it's going to learn all the, you know, all the parameters of what's going on. Now, let me ask you this. So let's say you, you drive super mellow all the time. You're never going over 2,500 RPMs. Let's say now the guy, Matt, Matt decides I don't like the car and he's only hit 2,500 RPMs. New owner buys the car and he likes to nail it. Does it relearn things? Yeah. It does. It's always learning. Get through what you guys do. I just think it's I think it's great. Thanks, dude. Yeah, I, I really appreciate it. I, I I love hearing that, especially from like I call myself a car enthusiast. Car guys are you guys, the guys that actually build stuff. I'm a hardcore enthusiast. I love the artistry of what happens, and I love when I get in your seat, dude. I can't tell you how much I love just driving. You know. Yeah.
make it to the uh, upholstery place. We took it off the trailer, and you know, I really had not dialed in the ride height a little bit. So it was sitting really low. So we backed it off the trailer. Well, it was in a, a driveway like this, but it had a, had a drainage uh, gully right through the middle of it. So the car kind of does that, you know, where it just kind of, oh, there you go. That's interesting. <laughs> That was the uh, battery issue that we had before. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's interesting. And I gotta say, I love it because you guys, this is what happens on a brand new, fresh build. <laughs> Lit but it is, it's, it's like- It totally it, is. It's so not a big deal, but it's exactly what happens. It's a fresh build. So Dean's gotta charge it. I'm curious, so so people know that are watching, if it's okay that we leave this in. Absolutely. So what is, what is it? We think there might be just a little bit of a vampire current coming out of the alternator where it drains the battery, and so it's not may not be charging properly, but once you put a charge on it, thing fires right back up and no problem. So Got it. Just yeah. a couple little tuning things. and A lot of people that watch the channel don't know what it's like to, they think you the car's built, now you just go drive it and enjoy it like you would your brand new Prius, right? No, you, you, you find little things and find little things and over the course of 500 miles to 1,000 miles, yep. then you sort it out and now you got a turnkey driver. There's all the little things that'll creep up, that 100%. didn't work, that short, whatever. And so when you're doing something custom rather than completely turnkey from, you know, from some kid or something else, yeah, you're gonna run into that and it's just part of the game. It's all yep. good. Yep, so. totally cool, awesome. Five minutes later. Okay, guys, check this out. So everything Robert just said, thinking that there's maybe a drain somewhere that's slightly pulling from the battery. We sat here for about two or three minutes, and then he gave it another shot and started. And why is that? Timing's off a little bit, so got to make a little adjustment. You build them, you drive them, you find the problems, and you build them, drive them, find the problems until and, it's right. And you own every part of it. Yeah, 100%. There it is. That's where we're ending the video today. As always, you guys, thanks for watching. And obviously to you, Robert. Thanks Appreciate for it. doing this with us, taking the time out of your day. You bet, brother. Appreciate I hope you go win today on your mountain bike. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, brother. Appreciate it. Good.